Okay, so I have no idea if I'm ever gonna actually release this video, but I thought I'd give you guys a tour of my recording studio for the podcast. Um, it's a little bit, oh, it's a little bit different than most recording studios. Um, <laughs> I call it my 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 office, and it's where I keep all of my transformers. Well, at least most of them. Um, and I thought I'd give you guys a little tour of it. So, we'll start from here. Um, this is where I keep my Titan class figures for the most part. We got, uh, Metroplex here. Rocking the stickers that were an absolute pain to put on. Um, one of my favorites. You'll notice I don't have the missile here, mainly because I don't want a cat accidentally triggering that, because uh, you can see it's kind of a big hole in my wall. Um, I think I have the batteries in them still. Nope, took them out. Uh, I got a little stepper here who's pretty much responsible for uh, Legend Scale Transformers as a whole. Um, and he's doing a whole arm thing. Then panning down a little bit, we got ourselves an Armada Unicron. I think his eyes should light up. Yep. Um, it's actually my second Armada Unicron. First one, a uh, friend was playing with and snapped the horn right off. Um, he's pretty much complete, as far as I know. There's that weird thing that these guys have with the wings that they don't really latch into place properly, but, you know, whatever. Then we got ourselves a uh, mini consult team holding the Dark Star Saber with a Perceptor and a Zoomy sticker because I've had this since the 90s. And then, of course, we got ourselves a, uh, well, I think this is the second production run of the um, Trip Trypticon figure, which you can tell because the smoke, the, the uh, towers here have a slight difference, which uh, I think it's this bit right here. Um, because there was a little bit of a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Asymmetry to the original figure. Um, overall, really cool action figure. Got some really good features going on here. Uh, he can actually swallow Titan Masters and they come into his gum, his tummy. Um, mine so far doesn't have the ratchet issue. Knock on wood. Uh, and then of course we've got, you know, dead end, I think. Doesn't matter. He came with a uh, Trypticon here. Then we got a um, a Jetfire from the Evergreen Green Collection. It's no leg articulation whatsoever. A little bit of arm stuff. Kind of cool. Um, man, I am really bad at camera work. Um, and then, you know, on this shelf, I've also got some various odds and ends. We got a uh, Titan's Return Windblade. Right there. Um, Nitro Zeus. Rodimus Prime. Some uh, blackout action. With a little bit of Bone Crusher and Skybite in the back. And of course, everyone's least favorite. No content. Starscream. And panning down a little bit more. We got uh, some Beast Wars type figures. With some Beast Hunters mixed in. I particularly like the... Uh, The Optimal Optimus setup here. Uh, I got the DNA add-on kit to give him these nice, cool little guns and the swords for his robot mode. Um, in the back there, I don't know if you can make it out, there's a Shin Godzilla fighting a Gypsy Danger who's fallen over since the last time I fixed him. And then we got some card stuff, which is not really interesting. Um, Got a little step stool over here so I can access my transformers on higher shelves. Here we have uh, the Zeo Rangers. Um, this was a late add on, this little helmet. I lost it many years ago, but total fan of these Zords. Really great. Serpent Terror there. Mainly out because it doesn't fit anywhere. Um, Energon Ironhide, which I actually won as a prize from the first BotCon I ever went to. And this guy right here is my first model kit I ever made. Uh, Mega Man Zero X, I think is his name. 
And we got ourselves some Zilla action. Uh, I think I've lost the missile for him a long time ago. Then panning out, we got a little bit of uh, the Power Rangers Power Dome. Mine's a little bit damaged. Got some breakage going on. But I did repair this. And I think the batteries are out, yeah. Um, I've also got a Gigastorm here which is originally what I was going to get instead of uh, the Titan class Trypticon, because I already had this guy, but the, the low price on the Trypticon, I think it was like 60 bucks, kind of made me go. And then of course we got the Cyber Beasts, just missing Thrustall right now, but I'm a huge fan of these guys. Um, we got an Ultra Magnus who's up here because when I went on vacation, I didn't want Jiro messing with him. Uh, the monster bots kind of chilling out back there. And my favorite ticking time bomb, Soundwave. Uh, I keep this guy in packaging. I'm not really a big fan of that. But, I don't know if you can see it. You can see that the rubber bands in there have already dry rotted. Problem with this guy is he's made entirely of gold plastic. He was originally supposed to be an Animorph, as were all these guys. And unfortunately, we didn't get the green color scheme that was on the back of the box, because then maybe we wouldn't have had the whole gold plastic issue. I've never seen him in alligator mode, and I never will, because that's the way my life is right now. Uh, we got some Galvatron from the Japanese Beast Wars series. Um, most of these guys are American Beast Wars, with a few noteworthy exceptions. Um, I'm going to call out Leo Convoy there, in particular. And we got a Jetstorm there. But, for the most part, these, are, these guys are the uh, Americanized versions of the molds, mainly because I really didn't want to buy duplicates of those molds. Because, although, you know, like, Clawjaw here is great, I don't need another Clawjaw. Plain and simple. Um, and then here we have some side swipes. And by some, I mean three iterations. Uh, this is the most recent uh, Studio Series release. War for Cybertron. Or Siege of Cybertron. And uh, I think this is Return of the Fa Revenge of the Fallen. Uh, personal favorite has got to be the middle one, though. Moving along, then we got some Beast Wars Neo action going on over here. Uh, some Cordra. We got the big convoy. The ridiculous long rack. Uh, Break and Stampy. Mock kick with. Uh, let's see if I can get this to show up on camera. Uh, there we go. Actual horsehair. Yeah, Japanese Transformers are a bit weird. Oh, there goes break. Yeah, we'll leave. Uh, forget his name. He's a Tanuki. Um, Heimlad, that's it. And then we got a moon right there. Not affiliated with anyone, just kind of chilling. Uh, some of the Decepticons, including... Uh, Magmasaurus, I uh, forget what his actual name was. And of course, my prized possession, the Taco Tank. I think we've talked about this on the podcast before. Uh, so Taco Tank is a micro... Um, I think it's a Micro Master type situation that got converted into a Transformers toy by Takara. Uh, it came with a limited edition version of Clawjaw, whose name is Ecard, or... No, E-Card was the name of the Japanese version. I don't remember what this guy's name is. But you can only get him from here, and I'll probably never take him out because I love him in the box. Then we got some God Neptune action, which is the Seacon Sans one member, I think. Uh, I don't remember who the member that's missing is. And then this is a uh, G1 Blaster. 
from a uh, SDCC and coming back over. Here we've got uh, some Transformers Collectors Club toys, a uh, Rampage before getting reformatted, and a uh, Depth Charge with everyone's favorite little mutant, Transmutate, and Universe Snarl, who doesn't suffer from the gold plastic syndrome that his Beast Machine's brother does. Right there is a GoBots Cheetor. The plastic is absolutely terrible on this thing. It's the cheapest thing you've ever seen. Uh, some Insecticons are back there with my collection of Datsuns and Stepper. What we got going on right here? Moving over, we got a Dinobot collection. Uh, the front five are from DX9's Warren Pocket. The back seven or so are from Age of Extinction. My particular favorite has got to be Scourge here, who's a Spinosaurus. He was made for that movie in particular. Um, and then we've got the Power Core Combiners Dinobot team, which is pretty awesome. I found that at a TFCon one year, and I did not regret it at all. In We've got a pre-Beast Mode Leo Convoy, Cindersaurus, Optimus Primal, and here we have uh, some Studio Series, particularly Movie 3 Optimus Prime, complete with his jetpack, and I forget what the name of that thing was, and Jetfire. Love this curmudgeon. And then we have uh, Abominus, who I could not resist picking up. My Wi-Fi. And my Transformers animated shelf. I have more Transformers animated toys, but this is what I've got out right now. Um, we got the battle damaged Megatron, because I like how he kind of fits in with everyone. Although, that being said... Sunstorm's a little bit tall. And then we got Optimus Prime over here. Battle damage. He's got a swing around gimmick. It's pretty cool. And then my favorite part of the shelf. The Season 1 cast of Beast Wars. This particular rat trap was my first Transformer toy I ever got. Although the gun is not original. I lost it while watching a comet. Love that mug. And I should note, this is not my first Cheetor either. My first Cheetor lives downstairs in a display case with all my other Cheetors. And I love them very much. We got some Phase Sixers up here. Got them beautiful lips on Overlord. Sky Shadow is my most recent acquisition of the three. And then of course, Six Gun, the most ridiculous Transformer ever. Uh, some cons, uh, I think that's, what is it, Thunderwing? And, oh, I don't remember his name. Tank Pants. Beast Wars Transmetal 2 Dinobot. This is the white and blue version as opposed to the yellow and the, like, purplish. Then, of course, my rarest two, uh, the pre-Beast Mode uh, Dawns of Futures Past, I believe, Waspinator, and Megatron. This guy is particularly great. I won him playing Blackjack poorly. Then we got ourselves a Transmetal 2 Megatron. If you can't tell, I really am in love with the... Uh, Old Megatron aesthetic. Mine has a little bit of breakage going on. Beast Machines Megatron and Beast Machines Optimal Optimus. Both of which are Megatron. Then here's kind of my generations shelf a little bit. Uh, we got Bruticus up here and Superion. 
And then I've got uh, the non-spaceship version of Blastoff, which I replaced recent initially with the spaceship one from Amazon. Some bots. Um, I'm a huge fan of the Headmasters in particular. Uh, Wolfwire, as he's called now, or Weird, Weird Wolf, is my absolute favorite Transformer from that era. Um, these, pre these Pretenders are pretty great. I've outfitted them with custom weapons that I 3D printed. See that right there. And we got the Heroic Guys, Hardhead, I think Twin Twist, Cup, and Blur. And the triple changers are back there as well. You'll notice I also have some uh, Godzilla posters. This one is Godzilla Mothra, King Ghidorah, All Out Attack, Monsters Attack, or whatever it is, the really long name. And then over here, I've got, let's see, Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. A little bit of my light in the way. Coming up here, we've got my Transformers Collectors Club toys. Uh, the Dawns of Futures Past Air Razor and Astro Train. The repaint, I think, of Armada um, Jetfire. Dion is kind of hard to get pictures of for you guys. And then behind it is my. Uh, Wings of Honor box set from my first BotCon. Some Generation 2 boys from Generation 2 Redux. Love that clench right there. Absolutely gorgeous. Razor Claw's pretty good too. And then there's the Stunticon job. Interesting story about this guy. He's based off of a septic tank. Uh, I forget what his name was, but it was pretty great. And I've gotten him twice. Uh, then we got Metal Hawk. Uh, Double Punch from the uh, uh, Timelines set. I forget what the name of that. Oh, yeah, Invasion. And then my probably my favorite theme for a year, uh, Machine Wars. Unfortunately, they didn't do new, new molds of all the Machine Wars guys, but we did get a Starscream, Sandstorm, Mirage, and, ooh, I want to say Thundercracker off the top of my head. It might be Skywarp. No, Skywarp has the transformation gimmick. Now, you may have noticed I have a lot of box spins down here. What these bins are, they're my storage bins for action figures not currently on display. So, in there we've got the original Power Rangers Titanus. This is just various stuff that I don't have uh, set up in my spreadsheet. So, for example, I've got this, uh, I think You're the Monkey Optimus Prime from Amazon. He's got some action figure sound effects. The uh, main reason I got this guy was because the original iteration of this mold, Air Attack Optimus Prime from Robots in Disguise, has some serious gold plastic problems. Uh, continuing on, I've got some... Uh, it's Tor from the uh, Die Ranger base season. Uh, these are various Power Ranger action figures. We've got Kimberly. Uh, we got the rider that goes along with this thing. No idea how this is going to look. Uh, some of my old Zords. Ninja Megazord is one of my favorites. The original uh, Daijujin, Daijujin. First Megazord. Dragon Zords down there. Currently in storage, but I cycle them through them occasionally. Uh, the 2011 Megazord. Maybe giving that to my nephew at some point in the future. Uh, oh god, this guy. Uh, and then up here, we've got some Beast Machines going on. I don't currently have a display of Beast Machines, so these guys are pretty much all of them. 
Uh, T Rex is down there. Oh, Magmatron is the name of the villain from Beast Wars Neo. Jeez. Down here is just odds and ends. We got a Groot uh, with Rocket, some Bionicle. Uh, these are the Toa Mata, Toa Nuva, some Gundam stuff, uh, Pohatu from the reboot, and I think that goes to, yeah, this is just odds and ends for my uh, Legacy Collection stuff. Let's just close that up. Okay. Um, this, well, we got the... Crown of Primes that came with Optimal Optimus. Uh, the Scepter of Primes or whatever. I think that this is, yeah, this is my Cheetor box. Um, you'll notice I have these numbers on everything. This is the 10th anniversary version of Cheetor. Um, we got the uh, Armada Cheetor. What else do we got in here? Some pretty good ones in here. Uh, this is the... Fox Kids repaint of Transmetal Cheetor, which is my favorite Cheetor of all time. Uh, Night Slash Cheetor, but in universe colors. And more of the original Cheetors. See, there's a thing with the original Cheetors where there were different eye colors. There's red. Uh, I think there's a green. This is the anniversary one, the Fox Kids repaint. And there's a blue, which is on display downstairs and the blue one is my personal chudor that i had when i was a kid um these are various i think japanese transformers yeah so because i have all my japanese guys pretty much on display right now this one is pretty lean uh you'll see i have extra parts that i don't have on display in here this is a japanese rat trap you can see that his face has a different color scheme. Might talk about that in a future video. Uh, some of the more interesting things from Beast Wars 2, you got uh, Machine Wars repaints. This is Beast Wars 2 Dirge. And you have, uh, this guy is Beast Wars 2 Starscream, and he interfaces with this guy who's my favorite plane, the B-2A Spirit, and that's BB. Additionally, we got, like, the Auto Jetters, which was, like, a primitive one-step Transformer thing. But I don't have those guys on display right now. Moving along. Uh, McDonald's Transformers. Pretty fun. Uh, I think this was mostly... Yeah, this is mostly the other Transformers I got my non-Japanese uh, Tigatron. You'll notice it's very yellowed. Uh, they came like that by default in America. In Japan, they actually were fairly white. And let's see what else is here. Ah, this is my kind of odds and ends bin for Transformers, uh, for Beast Wars in particular. See here, this is the uh, sound wave thing I was talking about. See, I don't know if you'll be able to make it out, but it's very swirly plastic. Very susceptible to breaking. Same with Torark. He's a Fusor. Uh, he's made entirely out of gold plastic. I'm afraid of the day that he'll crumble. I know that there's a uh, version not susceptible to gold plastic, but I've never seen an Electora in the wild. Um, this is the Generations Waspinator. That was a repaint. Pretty gorgeous toy, if I do say so myself. And I got a Legend Scale Megatron here. Once I get some more Legend Scale Transformers, I'll probably put them on display again. Uh, but that's not right now. This is mostly things that are too big or mutants or fill in the blanks. Oh, this guy's great. This is a uh, Robot Masters video convoy. Um, this particular one has a special finish that makes it absolutely gorgeous. And if you look, that's the original, and that's the smaller version. I adore this. To be fair, I adore most of the Transformers that are left over in here. Um, here's another 
gold plastic syndrome sufferer. Uh, Grimlock, he's still intact somehow, but I'm absolutely terrified of transforming him out of this mode. Because you see his legs there? If they'll focus. Yeah, that's all gold plastic. And because of the way Dinobot transforms, there's two pegs in his chest that you'll frequently lose on the gold plastic ones. And here's a gold plastic snarl. Uh, fun story about him. See this little gimmick right there? That, uh, this one. That little switch there? There's a spring that's loading this arm up. And over time, that spring is eventually going to just literally destroy him from the inside out. And there's nothing I can do about it. Such as toy collecting. Um, what else we got here? Fusors, mostly. I think this is the, yeah, this is the Transmetal box. You can see I have a Transmetal Rat Trap here. He's surprisingly in good condition, which might not sound like much, but with these guys, his chrome flakes like nobody's business. I think I have another version of him. Uh, Transmetal Tarantulas, absolutely gorgeous toy. Transmetal Waspinator. Eh. Rampage. I'll, I'll have to go over these. I have pretty much all of them. Oh, this baby. Fun story with him. This is my uh, original Transmetal Megatron. When I first started getting back into Transformers, I was transforming him and accidentally snapped his wrist, his uh, his shoulder off, which surprisingly common. Uh, he also has gold plastic going on in the waist, um, but on this one I have a golden disc reader that I got out of Botcon. I'm a pretty big fan of that. Oh, here we go. Uh, this is the Walmart exclusive version of Rat Trap. Notice the blue. Much better condition. I don't know what it is, but the Chemical composition of this guy's transmetal chrome just seems to hold up better. I don't know. Down here. Uh, I think this is mostly just big guys and machine wars. So this is uh, Revenge of the Fallen Optimus. We got uh, Energon Optimus Prime, which is a great toy. I'm going to want to do a review of that at some point. But the main sh the main act of this box, and it might not be super visible, is the Machine Wars. I have a complete collection of Machine Wars now. Put a lot of effort into tracking these guys down. Um, I had this one when I was a kid, and I loved him. Uh, but because the documentation, the instructions in it were vague, I thought he was supposed to come with guns uh, with missiles, because the original version of this toy, which was a Euro exclusive, I believe, had missiles. Um, and this one didn't. So I returned him. And then years later, I realized my mistake. Uh, Machine War Soundwave, absolutely phenomenal toy. Love this guy. Uh, and I think... Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Machine War's uh, Starscream, which is bizarre because Machine Wars Megatron was a, a tiny jet. So, for once, Starscream got one over on Megatron. And we'll just put this all back. All these uh, bins are actually labeled in a spreadsheet that I have. And in that spreadsheet, I am... Um, Keep track of the homes of all these Transformers. So theoretically, if I ever have to move, I can easily pack them. Um, this is BotCon stuff, mostly. Yeah, uh, these are the sweeps. Uh, Weird Wolf, who, this is the reason why he's my favorite headmaster. Uh, anything else that's good? Oh yeah, this uh, Electro. I think. I don't have his name on here. Um, this guy, his original version, total gold plastic sufferer. Some really good toy paints. Uh, Blaster, or no, Blast Charge, which is based off of the Beast Machines toy. 
Uh, what is this, Leozak? No, Skyquake. Turbo Master. You know, I got, I have a fairly large collection of these because I went to a lot of bot cons. Um, I'm a pretty big fan of them. I just like the repaints. And then up here, we got the Transmount 2 Beast Wars. Not really much to say about that. There's some really cool robot designs in here, but nothing really particularly interesting for this video. Uh, this is my animated box. You can see animated sound wave. And I've got a rat bat for him. Jazz. Black Arachnia. Uh, RC's first toy that she ever got. Really good toy, actually. Um, let's see, what is this? This is a Generations box in general. You can see we have the Titans Returns boys in here. Uh, Classic Prime's truck. One second, let me turn the light on. That should help. Okay. Pretty cool bin. This one's a little hard to reach, but it's my movie toys. And there's a reason why they're hard to reach. And then we got over here. Uh, this is just various odds and ends. We've got a false Cybertron, or Generations, Starscream, Sideswipe. Uh, what's this right here? Oh yeah, Prowl from R.I.D., but the non-yellowed version. Uh, who's this? Oh yeah, classic Starscream, pretty great toy. Thing is suffering from old degradation though. Um, then I got some various, oops, jump cut there. Uh, I got some various mini pla. There's the box for the Warren Pocket Dinobots. Uh, for the most part, that's pretty boring. Moving over, we got the Throne of the Primes with the true. The true prime reigning supreme, Cosmos. Yeah, he looks pretty great, doesn't he? Uh, Soundwave and... Dreadwing? Yeah, that sounds right. Battletech box that I'll probably never play. Little cryptid bin. If you haven't checked them out yet, check out Saturday Adventures. They're pretty cool. Moving right along, we got my chair that I do all the recording in, complete with cat scratches. And this guy is my baffle for recording because there's a huge gap right there, and otherwise I can't record. We got a uh, highbrow and trigger happy, two phenomenal. Titans Returns toys. Let's see if he'll actually. There we go. The Akiba Rangers. Kind of like putting blue through the ringer. These are some of my miniatures that I've used for DD campaigns. This is actually the first miniature I ever painted. Let's see if it'll actually focus. No? Okay. There we go. Niava of the Wild. It's a... Come on. Yeah, whatever. Uh, some of these I've painted. My favorite of them is uh, this girl right here. Did the bases and everything. Love painting. Haven't done it much lately, though. Some more miniatures, uh, kind of dark. There we go. Uh, mostly these are uh, WizKids miniatures. You can see they're kind of pre-painted. We got ourselves a uh, invisible guy. 
autofocus on this thing does not work well. <laughs> Some Monster Rancher miniatures. Uh, I used these guys early in my campaign before I had uh, a lot of real dandy miniatures, but Pink Swayzo here. Oh, I love Monster Rancher. It's such a goofy series. Some of my bigger guys don't fit in. Uh, I particularly like Apex back there. He's still a work in progress. I've been trying to paint him for several years now. But I kind of just paint him when I have free time. Dean and Sophie. That's her official name from Bones. A Beholder. And my most prized possessions. Uh, we got my signed copy of the Transformers movie by Weird Al Yankovic. Rick Gar, the Transformer voiced by Weird Al. And a little TV behind him to make a reference to the original movie where Rekgar says, I talk TV. My ill-advised vanity tour ticket. And, of course, the squeeze box, which has all of his studio albums in it. Can't get those anymore. Uh, these bins are more or less for, like, effects parts. Uh, got some Ultraman bits and bobs. Um, this is for the Warren Pocket Dinobots. It's like a Grimlock getting smarter helmet. Uh, Godzilla effects parts. Uh, you'll notice I didn't show any Godzilla figures today. Um, that's because they're all downstairs in a semi-elaborate display. And then we've got various stands, because when you have as many action figures as I do, you need stands. Uh, some more odds and ends miniatures. I got a pre-painted one. This is supposed to be a character by the name of Lucky. He was a cobalt in my campaign. Uh, just some odds and ends. Uh, this is some, ah, yes, uh, I have a dinosaur here from when I ran a Jurassic Park style adventure in my campaign. Some Araka from when I went to Araka land. And yeah. Then I've got some odds and ends. I've got a Malfo piece of terrain hanging out back there. Uh, a Hess truck from my grandmother. A tree I made because I made a tree. Some old Battletech stuff. Got a broken miniature right here. And a little fan from a Japanese festival. Love Q Ranger. My Red Dragon, which I was very proud of. And, uh, you know, back there, Twin Strike. It's a uh, <laughs> Abominus Legends class toy. Man, I cannot get a focus. Uh, we got the little pendant version of the Matrix of Leadership, and a McDonald's tank core, because I love them. Oh wait, I spoke too soon. I did have uh, Godzilla up here. Some CDs. I have Taste of a Variety. Love me some Streetlight Manifesto and Real Big Fish. They might be Giants. It's pretty good. Uh... These guys are great. Suburban Legends. Uh, Weird Al Yankovic. Some of the Megas. Rise of the Phoenix. The Aquabats. Uh, these guys. My absolute favorite. The Proto Men. Panning down a little bit. We got a... Uh, Transformers Prime Arachnid. I don't know why I have her there. Um, Transmutate, the statue from the 10th anniversary. Let's see if I can get a good look at her face. Oh, there's a sad puppy. Really good character. Really interesting episode of the show. Uh, my various watches, because I've collected watches over my life. Some of my favorite books and Bruticus. Uh, we got Grimlock from Fall Cybertron. I absolutely love this toy. 
the Ecto-1, because I love Ghostbusters. Love me some uh, Crestomanche, Pratchett. White Fang is strangely my favorite, like, classic literature book. And we got the Scary Tales of Tell in the Dark and some various odds and ends things that I use to study. And a little bit more. Old Keychain, Cliff Jumper, an Axelon, and for some reason, binoculars. Then the real event of the recording studio. Uh, my little display going on here of various Megatrons, Optimuses, Micromasters, Broadside, Power Rangers. These are the Legacy Edition ones. Um, my degree from RIT. A signed script from uh, Simon Furman. My signed copy of Telos from when I met, uh, I think, Todd DeZalgo. My old Godzilla movies. I love these. This is my favorite. One of my favorites right here. My absolute favorite, however, should be... Here it is. Godzilla vs. by Alante. It's a great cassette. Let's see. All right, it's not gonna focus. Um, then of course I've got my, wow, focus please. I've got my uh, recording setup, my mixer. Uh, really, I'm just using it to set levels. Uh, my cans that I use so I can hear Brandon. My mic, which is a Audio-Technica. Pretty big fan of it, got a little windscreen on it. The thing that I haven't hung up yet and I wanted to hang up for this video, but I got lazy. Uh, the best knockoff that I've ever, per I've ever gotten, or see this is a gift. It's a knockoff of the Jetman Mecca. And it has Jet Icarus, Icarus and uh, Garuda, and they call it Hawk Overlord. Love it. Probably will never open this thing. Um, we're almost we're almost done with this tour, actually. We got my uh, Proto Man helmet from a cosplay I did years ago. Alpha Trion, Predaking, Galvatron, the boys. Godzilla, a custom Alita one I painted a year years ago. Predator King again, and a Megatron helmet. Not Megatron, Mega Man. Wow. And of course, one of my most prized possessions, which is coincidentally right next to my weird owl that I just somehow forgot to mention. This is a piece of Godzilla artwork drawn by. Really cool person, Aaron Archer. Met him in person once, Talk Godzilla. He signed this for me. It's a gift from Lissa. I love it. Recommend it a lot. Check out his work. And then just going back over here to where we started the tour, we got the Godzilla versus Biolante poster, which kind of ties the whole room together. My project boxes, these are various odds and ends things that I haven't gotten around to doing yet. Um, more miniatures than you can shake a cat at, I guess. These are from the Bones Reaper thing. Got some pretty big pieces in here that one day I'll paint. <laughs> um, there's some Malfo minis that are prime but not painted. And of course, an air purifier, which has been off for the entirety of the show, which is there to keep down dust. Um, I think that's my room, my office. This is where every, almost every episode of Cryptopedia has been recorded. Um, and I'm usually fiddling with anything that's on that desk. So if you hear any clicks, that's what it is. Anywho, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I have no idea if I'm ever gonna post this. But apparently, if you're hearing me say this, I have posted it. Um, 
I think I'm going to start doing odds and ends toy reviews in the future, but I'm not sure. Uh, might have a few things down there to help me with that. Um, if you're interested, just drop me a line. Uh, if you saw any action figures today that you'd like to see a, fa a full review of or have any requests, drop me a message on Twitter, uh, JF Dunham. And, um, yeah, just uh, enjoy life, people. We've only got one. Man, I love Metroplex. Optimus Prime in his chest. See it? And a little bumblebee there. I love him. <laughs> Alright. Until next time, people. I'll probably see you again on the next episode. Let's let's get a of Cryptopedia. Alright. Adios.